So in this video, I'm just going to go over an example of a read burst to give you an idea of the details of Axie read bursts. So let's suppose that we want to do a read burst, um, which is going to be an incrementing burst. So we're going to access successive memory locations. We're going to do four transfers, and we're going to have four bytes in each transfer. So a total of 16 bytes transferred and uh, if from contiguous four byte regions. So just to refresh ourselves, here are the ports that are relevant um, for Axie bursts. There's a bunch of other extra fields for quality of service and regions and things like that, but we're not going to go over that. The relevant ports that you really need to know about are the burst type, the address, the length, the size, the ready and valid controllers for the address information, and then the data response last and ready and valid controllers for the read data channel. And I cover those in more detail in earlier videos. So. First, we're going to do an incrementing burst, right? So the first question is, what is AR burst going to be? What's the value? So in Axie, AR burst is a two-bit field, and uh, there's a burst type for reads and writes. That's why it's AX burst rather than read burst or write. And bursts can be fixed bursts, writing to the same location over and over again, incremental bursts, wrapping bursts, or there's this reserved burst type, and I guess it's because in case they want to add a new burst type to the standard at some point. So we're going to do an incremental burst, so we're going to put the value 0, 1 on the AR burst uh, wire. So the next part is there's four transfers. So if you look at the Axie standard, and this might seem a little weird at first, the burst length is actually the length port field plus 1. So uh, this field AR length, the read length, defines the burst length, but if the AR adder or AR length field is zero, that's actually a one transfer burst. And then if it's one, then it's two and so on. And in Axie 3, uh, you can do, I believe it's up to 16 transfers. And then uh, in Axie 4, it's two to the seventh plus one. So uh, up to 256 transfers. And so because we're doing uh, four transfers, we're going to do four minus one on the length port. So we're going to say three on the length port, and that will mean three plus one equal to four transfers. Um, and then we're going to do four bytes per transfer, and this is determined by the size port. So if you go up here, AR size is the number of bytes in each output transfer of the burst. And so we're going to do four bytes per transfer, and the way this is encoded on the size field, which is uh, three bits wide, or the size input, which is three bits wide, is that the number of bytes in the burst is two to the value of AX size. So if it's zero, we have one bytes in the transfer, or one byte, sorry. If it's uh, one, then we have two. If it's binary two, then we have four, and so on. So we're doing four bytes per transfer, so we're gonna put zero, one, zero on the uh, size bus. So what is this actually gonna look like? Um, well, let's suppose we have a memory with, you know, locations, let's just look at 0 through 15 for now, because we're going to do a 16-byte transfer, and each of these is one byte. And let's suppose that at location 0, we've got byte 0, at location 1, we've got byte 1, at location 2, you know, 2, and so on, all the way up through 15, and then so on and so on and so on through the whole memory. So what this transfer is going to look like is, well, there's two segments. There's the segment on the address channel where we're going to uh, set the kind of burst we want to do, and then we're going to receive the data. And I realize I'm not going to probably get any graphic design awards for this timing diagram, but just bear with me. So in this uh, first clock period, nothing has really happened. And then we're going to initiate the burst, and we're going to request a burst by setting AR valid to be high, saying, hey, the burst-related data is now valid. And we're going to set AR burst to be 1, which means an incrementing burst. I've written that in binary. And then we're going to have decimal 0 as the address. And I've just decided to write it in decimal because uh, it just looked cleaner to me. And then length, also written in decimal, is going to be 3. Size, if we're writing it in binary, is going to be 0, 1, 0. So it's going to be 2. But right now, the address read ready um, is not uh, high. It's low, which means that the receiving memory is not ready to receive a burst. So we haven't, uh, you know, the ready valid handshake has not completed yet. Now in the cycle after that, let's say AR ready goes high. We're just keeping all these values constant because on this side we're waiting for ready and valid to both be high. And now on this clock edge, ready, AR ready, and AR valid are both high, which means that the handshake signal has completed and the memory, the slave, should start servicing uh, this burst. So now if you look down at the R data channel or the read data channel, that's where the data is going to come out. 
And there's ready valids for ready valid handshakes. There's a last flag to indicate whether the current transfer is the last transfer. And then there's our data and our resp. Our data is going to contain the actual bits that we want. Oh, excuse me. Oh, but yeah, actually, if you this line is kind of helpful. So this clock edge is the clock edge where ready and valid on the AR channel are both high, and so this is where the transactions acknowledged, or where the burst is acknowledged between the two and starts. Now on the our data channel, we're gonna have four transfers, and on each transfer, um, the R valid is gonna be set high. If we're the receiver of the data coming out of the memory, we're gonna set R ready to be one this whole time. Let's just suppose we're ready immediately after the transaction and we're just ready the whole time. So we're gonna say, okay, we're ready. And now we're gonna wait for R valid to be high. R valid comes out of the memory and we're gonna have R resp and R data are the two pieces of data. And R resp is a two bit output, which says whether the uh, read failed or succeeded. And let's suppose that all four reads succeeded. So the, um, the memory is going to set our data to have 0, 1, 2, and 3 on the bus, right? Because this is going to be the first four bytes of the transaction or of the burst. And it's going to set read response to be OK, and it's going to set our value to be high. And because our ready is already high on this clock edge, um, our ready and our value are both high, so we've completed the first transfer in the burst. And then it's going to be, so we're going to wait for a little while, and then we're going to get the second transfer out, and that's going to be acknowledged here. And we're going to get bytes 4, 5, 6, 7, then bytes 8, 9, 10, 11, then later on we'll wait for a little while and get out 12, 13, 14, and 15. And crucially notice that our last is going to be zero this entire time because there's four transfers. So the first transfer is not the last transfer, the second isn't the last, the third isn't the last, but the fourth transfer is the last. So on the fourth transfer, our last is going to be high, indicating this is the final transfer of the burst. So looking over at this uh, channel, there's four critical clock edges here. This clock edge, this clock edge, this clock edge, and this clock edge are the edges where R valid and R ready are both high. And so these indicate the places where uh, the transfer handshake takes place for each of the four transfers. So that's basically how Axie read bursts work. Um, hopefully this timing diagram helped things, or uh, helps you understand things, even though it's a little bit sloppy. And in the next video, we're going to start talking about the right channels and about right bursts, which are actually very similar to read bursts, um, but we're putting state in and getting responses for right successes out. Uh, and we'll talk about that in subsequent videos.